So, in the previous lecture we have introduced the concept of countable sets and few examples we have seen uh, the countable sets all uncountable sets. Here we will continue with the count same countable sets with few more examples. Like so, the first example let us take uh, set of all set of all squares of natural numbers natural numbers uh, has a uh, number is countable is countable because the set of squares of natural number means it is 1, 4, 9, 16 and so on. That is a set uh, of those element x where x is of the form n square and n is a natural number. Okay? So, this set has a one to one correspondence if we define a mapping f from j to this set say capital A which maps n to n square that is f of n is n square then it is easy to show that f is 1 1 and it is a 1 to 1 correspondence. So, because why 1 1 because f n 1 equal to f n 2 will implies n 1 square minus n 2 square is 0 which implies n 1 minus n 2 into n 1 plus n 2 is 0, but n 1 plus n 2 cannot be 0. So, this implies that n 1 is equal to n 2. So, f is 1 1. Therefore, there is a, so there is a 1 to 1 correspondence, correspondence uh, between the set A and set of positive integers. j 1 to n and so on. Hence, a is countable. Similarly, the other sets are also like set of all even set of all even even positive integers. or set of all odd positive integers integers or maybe the set of all prime set of all prime numbers that is 2 3 5 7, 11 and so on. These are all countable sets. Countable sets which can be easily shown by drawing a mapping uh, from this set to the set of natural number which is easy to just say even in positive integer f of n is equal to a mapping can be defined from j to this set say b such that f of n is equal to 2 n. Then this is a 1 1 mapping and into. Similarly, here odd integers 2 n plus 1 and like this. Similarly, for the primes also we can do for that. Okay. So, these are all net, uh, sets which are countable and it is all uh, subsets of a natural number subset of the. So, it means this uh, shows that an infinite set is a set which has a one to one correspondence with its subsets also. Okay. So, that is why we define like that. Then another examples with this, uh, which we are doing uh, the set of all rational numbers are countable set of all rational numbers set of all rational numbers is a countable set and this also we have discussed it that uh, when the positive let us 
take the different cases here again suppose I take set of all positive rational number rational numbers that is it will be of the form p y q where p and q both are positive ok. So, basically this and p q are say integer uh, natural numbers. So, basically this is of the form if you put it in the form of the sequence it is of this type p q sequence where p q are natural number. Then we can arrange in the form of the sequence we can arrange these numbers in the form of sequence such that p plus q is r where r is 2 3 4 and so on. It means we can put it in this way 1 by 1 the first term so that p plus 1 is equal to 2 then we can put it as another say 1 by 2 2 by 1 so the 3 and then we can go 1 by 3 uh, 2 by 2 then 3 by 1 and continue this. So, it has a 1 to 1 correspondence with the set of positive integer which has a 1 to 1 correspondence with the set of positive integer 1 2 3 4 and so on. So, it is a countable set then same case is with the set of all negative in all negative rational numbers. In a similar way we can it is also countable then so it is uh, this is countable is it not and this guy. then set 0 single term set 0 is a countable set is a finite. So, if I take the all union then set of rational number is set of all positive rational numbers all negative rational numbers and including 0. So, if we put it in this form 0 1 minus 1 half minus half 2 minus uh, uh, 2 and continue this way plus minus and all these things then this entire set is countable 1 to 1 correspondence with that and countable we can get this. Then also we were discussing about the uh, points whose coordinates are rational number this is another example uh, that also we have seen uh, the set of points set of points in a plane in a plane whose coordinates are rational numbers are rational numbers is countable. So, set of points in a plane whose coordinates are rational numbers that is the set is of this type uh, whose coordinates are rational numbers. So, we can say a b where a and b both are rational numbers q q is the set of rational numbers because any point in the plane will be ordered pair and we get this point. Now, this is each q since q is countable q is countable set and this set is a uh, ordered pair of whose elements are countable then according to that uh, result which we have seen that if s 1 s 2 s n are countable then the countable union of the countable set is countable and accordingly we can say if there is a n tuples each coordinates each uh, belongs to a set which is countable then that collection of the n tuples will also be countable. So, basically it is a uh, doubly, uh, double uh, means coordinate and where these are rational. So, this will be a countable set is it not. So, we can say it is a countable actually based on this result is that set of point based since you can say uh, the set of a set of points a set of points in p dimension this is dimension is 2 
in p dimension dimensions each coordinate of which each coordinate of which uh, which assumes a countable assumes a countable assumes a countable uh, set of values is countable. In fact, this was shown already because if suppose a set of p dimensional is there, we prove by means of induction we have shown that if the set and this set a 1, a 2, a p, where the a i's are in a set a which is countable, then this collection of the set is also countable and this we have shown when uh, i is 1, then this coincide with the set a which is countable, then we have assumed for p minus say up to p minus 1 and for the p when you write the point it is of this form called ordered pair. Then when you fix up one value other values keep on changing, so it is a countable set. So, this we have already discussed and this countable. Okay. Now, based on the another result which is the set of polynomials set of polynomials that is a naught x to the power n plus a 1 x n minus 1 plus a n minus 1 x plus a n. This is the by where the coefficients this set of all polynomials where the coefficients are integral coefficient with integral with integral coefficients are is countable is countable means this set of polynomials where the coefficients are integers are integers is countable. Now, you see the there is a one to one correspondence between the set of polynomials and this set of p tuples since there is uh, a one to one correspondence correspondence with the set of points uh, correspondence between the polynomial uh, a naught x to the power n a 1 x n minus 1 plus n let us be p x p x of degree n to the tuples a naught a 1 a 2 n n plus 1 tuples this is one means a corresponding to each polynomial we can get this tuples and if this tuple is known we can construct a polynomial of degree n. So, there is a one to one correspondence between these two, but what are the coordinates, but the coordinates of this they are integers integral values and this integer is a countable set which is countable. So, this collection of the tuples is countable set because these integers and this collection of the tuples will be countable. So, this is countable and there is a one to one correspondence between the elements of this set to this. So, this collection will also be countable. So, this shows that um, set is countable. So, set of polynomials is countable of degree say n is countable. It's okay. Then algebraic numbers. The set of all algebraic numbers, the set of all algebraic numbers numbers is countable. What is the algebraic number? The algebraic number x 
it is a solution of an algebraic equation. Uh, the an algebraic number x, an algebraic number x is the solution of of an algebraic equation of the form a naught x to the power n a 1 x n minus 1 plus a n equal to 0, where the coefficients a naught a 1 a 2 n these are all integers. So, this is the solution a number x which satisfy this equation will be an algebraic number or corresponding to a solution solution of this equation will be an algebraic numbers. Now, the cof if we remove this 0 just I take then this is a polynomial degree n and the coefficients are integers. So, according to the previous result if the coefficients are integer then collection of all such polynomials will be a countable set. Clear? So, once the polynomial when we put it equal to 0 you are getting algebraic equation. So, the roots of this algebraic equation will be at the most n. So, these n roots which will satisfy this equation. So, each equation will have the roots and since this equation this collection of the polynomial is countable therefore, the corresponding roots will are set of all algebraic numbers which are the roots of this equation will be countable. So, this we can say like this we can write like this since every polynomial every polynomial equated to 0 equated to 0 uh, on, has only a finite number of root number of roots has only a finite number of roots. Therefore, the set of all algebraic numbers therefore, the set of all algebraic numbers set of all algebraic numbers forms a countable set. Countable sets of finite set, countable set of finite sets, because these are solutions are finite, so it forms a found finite set, finite. So it is countable and is consequently counted, and hence is countable. Hence is countable. Consequently countable. Consequently. countable that is what because this polynomial when you find the roots of this polynomial you are getting a finite roots maybe at the most n. So, basically each equation correspond to a roots. So, we can just say that this equation has the root say alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n say alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha p where the p may be less than or equal to n. So, this equation will correspond to this. So, the collection of all such equation means collection of all such elements, but these are finite which is countable okay? and then collection p at the field is also countable. So, this set will be a countable set. Okay? So, okay. Then uh, the algebraic numbers uh, once you get then all the transcendental numbers. Uh, becomes the uncountable. So, let us see the few example of a uncountable sets. First example which is uh, uh, say very in important is the real set of all real number set of all real numbers in the interval open interval 0 1 is not countable. 
is not countable. So, what the concept is that all the infinite sets need not be countable. So, this is one of the example where the set of all real numbers these are the inf they form an infinite sets infinite real numbers lying between 0 and 1, but this set is not countable. The region is like this. <laughs> we assume suppose the set uh, is countable suppose the set of all real numbers suppose the set of all real numbers in the open interval 0 1 is countable. So, once it is countable we can arrange in the form of sequence. So, we can arrange them in the form of sequence. Each we can arrange the elements of the set in the form of sequence say suppose say x 1, x 2, x n and so on right, because they are infinite numbers. So, we get a sequence infinite sequence ok. Now, each x i these are reals in the interval 0 1. So, we can write down the decimal expansion of x. So, each element each x i will have decimal or can be expressed in a decimal expansion decimal expansion will have a decimal uh, can be expressed uh, will have a decimal or can be expressed can be expressed by means of uh, can be expressed in terms of the decimal expansion in decimal expansion. So, let us suppose the x n is having the decimal expansion as 0 0.a 1 n a 2 n a 3 n a n n and so on. We are what is a we are these coordinates we are the edge these a h and these edge are any one of the integer or any one of the digits 0, 1, 2 up to 9 up to 9 a terminating we assume is a terminating terminating decimal being being terminate decimal being supposed to end supposed to end with a continuation of zeros zeros means when the terminate suppose it terminate here then rest we will write 0 0 0 0 like that. So, it is terminate 1 ok. Now, with the help of this let us construct a new number. So, now we construct a number alpha as follows alpha I am writing the decimal expansion of alpha is 0 point alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha 3 alpha n and so on. We are such that the alpha n is nothing but a n n plus 1 except except that a n is 0 alpha n is 0 alpha n is 0 when a n n a n n is either 8 or 9 in order to avoid the possibility of recurring 9 n. This is done in order to avoid in order to avoid uh, the possibility in order to avoid the possibility of possibility of 
possibility of a recurring nine. Nine, okay, in alpha. This we are doing. Now we claim that this point alpha so constructed differs from each any term x1, x2, xn of the set of the points in the 0 1. Why at least at one place? Suppose I take x1, then x1 here is a 1 1 is the first place a 1 1 while the in alpha the first point is alpha 1 and alpha 1 is what a 1 1 plus 1. So, basically whatever the first point is uh, first decimal place is there we are replacing this by plus 1 next digit the digit will be say instead of this we can write the 7 to 8 6 to 7 and so on except on whenever it is 8 or 9 then we can write this to be 0 that is all. Suppose this is 8 then we get 9 so we will put it alpha 1 to be 0. Similarly when to x 2 the second decimal place in x 2 is a to n but second decimal place of alpha is alpha 2 which is a 2 2 plus 1. So, again 1 is added here. So, clearly we will see uh, except. So, this number this number alpha is different from is different from uh, any one of the number one of the number any one of the numbers x n x n 4 it is different from 4 it is different from x 1 from x 1 in at least at least at this the first digit first digit it is different from x 2 from x 2 in at least at least the second digit and so on. So, this way, so but alpha is what? Alpha is having a decimal expansion where the positive uh, this side is 0, means all the terms are less than 1, lying between 0 and 1. So, it is, but alpha is a real number lying in the interval 0, 1. And since we have assumed 0, 1, the set of all real numbers in 0, 1 is countable. So, it can be arranged in the form of a sequence that we have, but this alpha does not fall in any one of the uh, uh, does not coincide with any one of these x n. It means that uh, our assumption is wrong, because if it is countable then alpha must be one of the x n's, but this is not true. So, that shows that uh, our assumption is wrong. So, contradict our assumption. Hence, 0, 1 set of all points, hence the set of all points, all real numbers in the interval 0, 1 is uncountable, is not countable, and that is proof. So, okay. now if we take say any interval, the set of real numbers in any interval a b is not countable, because if I make the function t minus a over b minus a this is our f t, then it will transfer the function this mapping will transfer the interval a b into the interval 0 1. Okay. And this is a 1 1 on transformation, it is a 1 1 mapping. So, and this interval is uncountable. 
So, set of all points in this interval is set of all reals in this interval is uncountable. So, in this also set of all reals numbers in this interval is uncountable. And then if we extend it, then we say uh, an important result is that is the set of uh, the continuum is not countable. The continuum continuum is not countable. Continuum means set of all real numbers over entire real line is not countable. Entire real line is not countable. That is what it As a corollary of this, we can prove one thing the set of irrational numbers. irrational numbers in any interval in any interval is not countable and solution is very because a interval a b a b contains both rational and irrational points and irrational real numbers reals so and rationals are countable this we have seen this is uncountable therefore this implies that set of all irrational numbers irrational numbers in the interval ab is not countable And same way we can also write this corollary the set of transcendental number the set of transcendental number transcendental number which are not algebraic numbers transcendental number dental numbers in any or in any interval in any interval is not countable because the reason is if we remove the set of all uh, algebraic numbers from this then we obtain a un uh, algebraic number which is countable we can get the transcendental left out because the reason if we remove If we remove the set of all set of algebraic set of algebraic numbers which is countable, which is countable from the any interval a b, then then the complement set of transcendent is un non countable is uncountable then complement of it then complement then remaining one which is transcendental number will be not countable and that is what ok. So, there are few uh, examples we have seen now few more uh, we will continue when we go for the concepts of uh, like uh, some uh, dense set then perfect sets etcetera then we will go uh, for the few more examples where the countability or uncountability of the set is con will be considered. Now, let us come back to our metric space. Now, so this is the optional one, but we will discuss it here. Uh, as we have seen that in case of the real line, when we pick up the two point x and y, then 
the distance between x and y is defined as mod of x minus pi. This is the absolute distance between the two points on the real line. And this distance will always be greater than 0 and will be 0 if and only if the x equal to y. Then if we measure the distance either from x to y or from y to x both will be the same. Then third is when we take the any point z either in between x and y or maybe outside then this will remain less than equal to x minus y plus y minus z. So, these properties are satisfied by the absolute function or we say the distance notion function defined on the real numbers or on the real line. Then we wanted to extend it to an arbitrary metric arbitrary set because this is the set of real numbers. We are having this property. Now, this property we wanted to make it as an axiom for an arbitrary set and that leads to the concept of the metric space. So, we define the metric space as a metric space x d is a pair is a pair x d consisting of a non empty set x of elements we call it a real point call it points and a notion of distance function d defined over x cross x to r satis which satisfies the following properties the following properties. The first property is the distance between the two point p q is greater than 0 if p is different from q and distance between p q, p, p is 0. In fact, other way round also we can say vice versa also. The uh, so, second is uh, distance uh, is this and d of p q is the same as d of q p then c is d of p q is less than equal to d of p r plus d of r q. So, uh, distance function is a bit satisfy the first is you can write thus 0 property d is a non negative real real valued function non negative real valued function and this property we can also write it that is d of p q is 0 if and only p equal to q we can replace it in fact this is so, when p and q are identical both are equal to 0 and vice versa. So, if these properties are satisfied then we say this set x together with the notion of the distance forms a metric space. And one of the example is our x is r set of real line and d of x y is defined x x minus y where x and y are real then as we have seen earlier satisfy all the property. Then another examples is suppose x is say R2, R2 is the two dimensional plane where the elements is of the form say x1, x2, y1, y2 and like this so on. So, suppose this is x element, this is another element and continue then d of x y which is written as mod x minus y. I am writing just the same using the mod, but meaning of this is in two dimensional case, it will be x 1 minus y 1 whole square <coughs> plus x 2 minus y 2 whole square under root. In case of three dimensional, the distance between x y is defined as 
we write the same way mod x minus y but thing is the is x one minus y one whole square x two minus y two whole square x three minus by 3 whole square means x1 x2 x3 by 1 by 2 by 3 these are the coordinates belongs to r3 y by 1 by 2 by 3 belongs to r3 and it can be shown, shown that this these satisfy the condition of the metric so we are not going in detail it's a part of the function analysis so there it will be discussed what we are concerned is that since we have discussed it the concept of the neighborhood open sets closed sets open ball closed ball in real line with the help of the modulus functions so this we wanted to extend it, this concept to a arbitrary metric space arbitrary set with the notion metric space so let's see the few uh, say concepts which are useful for further. So, we define the let x be a metric space let x d I am writing x d be a metric space okay. and then we define like this first definition is the neighborhood. neighborhood which we denoted by n r p that is neighborhood of a point p with radius r. So, this we write is a neighborhood I am writing n b d neighborhood of a point p in a metric space in a metric space x d in a metric space x d is the set of all points is the collection or is the set of all points q belongs to x such that the distance between p and q is strictly less than r then r is called the radius of this then r is the radius of the neighborhood okay it means our neighborhood of a point in a metric space which we denote by nrp that is is the set of those point q belongs to x such that distance of p and q is strictly less than r so this is now for example in case of real line if x is r1 then this neighborhood n r p is nothing but what q belongs to r1 such that mod of p minus q is less than r that is it is an interval it is an interval lying between p minus r to p plus r and q will be the point somewhere here so this is the interval equivalent to the interval this this interval when x is r2 then n r p which is q belongs to r2 such that mod of p minus q the distance i am just writing the distance okay d2 is less than this is the 2 distance 2 is less than r that is it is the set of all q such that under root of this under root of p uh, two points are there then p1 minus q1 whole square plus p2 minus q2 whole square is, is less than r that is where p is p1 p2 q is q1 q2 both belongs to r2 so it is a ball centered at uh, uh, p1 q1 with a radius say r so all such points will be here so it is the neighborhood of this Similarly, we can go for other. Then, second definition is the limit point of the set. A point P, a point P in a metric space XT 
is a limit point is a limit point of the set E which is a subset of X limit point of the set E if every neighborhood of P if every neighborhood of P if every neighborhood P contains a point contains a point Q different from P such that Q is in E such that Q is in E. So, this is the point and never uh, limit point means if this is a space metric space X D and here is the set E we say this P this P may or may not be belongs to E, but it will be a boundary point of E if it is a limit point then P is called the limit point of this if every neighborhood around the point if we draw neighborhood means suppose in R 2 we get the neighborhood in this pair and like this. So, if every neighborhood of the point P must if it includes the point Q other than P which is in E then we call say P is the limit point of the set E. Okay. Then in definitions third this is the definition about the isolated point if P belongs to E and P is not a limit point and P is not a limit point, P is not a limit point uh, of E, P is not limit, then P is called an isolated point, P is called an isolated point isolated point for example suppose i consider the set e as this suppose i take set e as the set or uh, say 0 1 union set 2 suppose i take this set 0 1 union 2 in r2 which is subset of r2 r sorry in subsets of r so interval this now 2 here 2 is an isolated point isolated point why because if we draw a neighborhood around the 2 then it does not include any point of e so 2, two cannot be a limit point of e but 2 is a point of e so, it is an isolated point and C D. Close set E is said to be closed, E is closed if every limit point of E if every limit point of E is a point of E is a point limit point is a limit point of E. Then E a point P a point P uh, is an interior point of interior point of E if there exist or if there is a neighborhood if there is a neighborhood n of p there is a neighborhood n of p with a suitable radius such that this neighborhood is totally contained in e so what he says is this is our set e we say this point p is an interior point if there exists a neighborhood around the point p which is totally lies inside e then such a point P is called an interior points. Then E is said to be open, a set E in a metric space is said to be open if every point of E if every point of E is an interior point of E. Interior point of E then this call then g complement the complement of e
E denoted by E C is the set of is the set of all points P belongs to X set of all points P belongs to X such that P is not in E H a set E is said to be perfect in a metric space X D if E is closed E is closed and if every point of E point of E if every point of E is perfect if every point of E is a limit point of E. I a boundary set we have already discussed. So, it is a, a set E is said to be bounded if there exist or if there is a real number m such that and a point and a point q belongs to x such that such that the distance between p and q does not exceed by m for all p belongs to e and lastly we say j a set e is dense in a metric space x d in a metric space x d if every if every point of x every point of x is a limit point every point of x is a limit point of e or a point of e or a point of e or a point of e it means what when we say a set this is x a set e this is e is said to be dense in this it means every point uh, every point of x every point of x is a limit point of e all a point a. so if we take any point x uh, say here suppose i take any point x here then this point will either be a point of e or if it is not a point of e then it must be a limit point of e so limit point of e if we draw a neighbor around the point p there must be some point q of e which is different from p so in this case the element of x and element e they are so close to each other that you cannot separate out as soon as you take any x and draw a neighbor around the point x you will always find as some point of e different from this or maybe the point itself is a point in e so such a case we say it is dancing for example the set of real line for example our uh, e which is a set of rational number and x is r <coughs> then this e is dense in r because any real number can be approximated by means of rational number so if we draw any real uh, 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 never around the point real number we get another real number is rational point which is different from this so this becomes the dense okay thank you very much